Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Glen uh, Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission meeting for Monday, June 27th, 2022. My name is Yazdan Emrani, and I'm the Director of Public Works for the City of Glendale. Uh, we will take a motion to elect the chairperson, chairperson pro tem. However, before we do that, I'd like to read the following statement. For public comments and questions during the meeting, uh, please call 818-937-8100. Uh, city staff will be submitting these questions and comments in real time to the appropriate person during this meeting. You can also fill out the uh, speaker cards that we have in the chamber. And with that, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Lester? Here. Commissioner Nazarian? Yes. Commissioner Bonstein? Present. Commissioner Yakubian. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, before we begin, we need to select a chairperson pro tem for the meeting. So if anybody likes to make a motion. Sure, I'll make a motion to nominate um, Commissioner Nazarian for chair pro tem. I'll second. All right, roll call please. Chairperson pro tem Nazarian? Yes. Commissioner Bonstein? Yes. Commissioner Lester? Yes. Commissioner Yakubian. It would be your job now, uh, Chairperson Nazarian, to ask for the next item on the agenda and continue to do so step by step as we go. Thank you. So let's get to the first item in the agenda then, please. Item 1B is flag salute, led by Chairperson. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item, please. Item two, posting the agenda. The agenda for the uh, the agenda for Monday, June 27, 2022, special meeting of the Glendale Transportation and Parking Commission was posted by June 22, 2022, before 5 p.m. on the bulletin board outside of City Hall. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting agenda. Meeting minutes, I'm sorry. I'll second. I'll take roll call. Chairperson Azarian? Yes. Commissioner Bonstein? Yes. Commissioner Lester? Yes. Commissioner Yakubian? Next item, please. Item four is presentations. There are no presentations today. Next item, please. Item five is uh, consent items, but there are no consent items today. Okay. Item number six, please. Item six are action items. Would you like me to introduce yes, the first please. one? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first item is a, uh, a presentation we have on a quick build alternative for the Brand Boulevard Complete Streets demonstration project. I'm going to ask our principal uh, transportation traffic engineer, Mr. Pastor Casanova, to do the presentation. I don't see the light lighting up here. Yeah. It's not lighting up. Oh, is this automatic? Test, can everyone hear me? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, that'll be fine. This is a presentation.
Thank you, Mr. Nrani, for the introduction. And um, Chair Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian and members of the con Commission, uh, this presentation is going to be regarding the North Brand Boulevard Quick Build Project. There are uh, uh, several slides to go through, so I'm going to go through them quickly in the interest of time uh, and to give us time at the end for questions and comments. Uh, this project uh, was made uh, possible by a 2018 uh, Southern California Association of Government Sustainable Communities Program grant and the city, where the city of Glendale was awarded um, a, um, a grant fund of $500,000 for uh, funding a quick build, quick build project for the Brand Boulevard Complete Streets Demonstration Project. Uh, the agenda for today's presentation, presentation will include a project overview, an update of, uh, of the project components, as well as a review of existing conditions and a review of the uh, different quick build draft design alternative concepts, as well as a discussion of next steps. Okay, my apologies, technical difficulties with the clicker. Um, so this is a brief overview of the project team, which is a, a combined effort between uh, uh, multiple entities, including the Southern California Association of Governments, the City of Glendale Department of Public Works, uh, a team of consultants to assist with the design uh, concept preparations and the community outreach as well as uh, participations from the Safe Routes Partnership and the LA County Bicycle Coalition. <laughs> I'm having problems with this clicker. Okay, yes. Um, so what is a quick build project? Um, a quick build project is a pilot program infrastructure project, in this case supporting an active transportation uh, system mode that uses short term, low cost and scalable strategies that allow uh, the facilities to be tested, evaluated and engaged by the community. These strategies used, uh, sh use short term features such as traffic paint, uh, traffic marking paint, flexible delineators, and planters and signage as examples. The uh, project goals and, ob and objectives were or are to re-envision the North Brand Boulevard corridor for active transportation and promote walking and bicycling through traffic calming measures and improve access to transit, encourage shared mobility and improve overall ADA access and safety. The, uh, these are the, the project timelines of the project and, and the takeaway from this is, is how quick it is, hence the term quick build. Uh, the beginning of the project or project kickoff is in October of 2021. And we fast forward to the uh, completion of the project, that's estimating spring of 2023, which is a time frame of a year and a half to do all the data collection, the uh, community outreach, preparation of the concept plans and implementing the project in a relatively short, quick build timeframe. Uh, community engagement is a critical component of the project, uh, includes a, a website that was developed as well as several community touch points that are part of the project. Uh, the community engagement included uh, walk and bike audits that were conducted recently in May and uh, where participants had the opportunity to uh, provide their input uh, uh, regarding different concerns and, um, and overall support was demonstrated to be overall positive for the uh, proposed project. The community en engagement included several touch points where the goal was to really to raise project visibility, inform the community about the project, generate some excitement about the, uh, this pilot program, as well as increase uh, and generate support for active transportation. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is an example of one of the community touch points where uh, paper tree tags were, were, uh, were stuck to traffic signal poles at several locations along the corridor. 
And these, uh, these tree tags essentially provided project information, website information, and gave the opportunity uh, to the community to engage in the project. Here are a couple of photos of the community taking the tags for information. Uh, some of the feedback that was re received thus far shows that 53% uh, of the responses of the respondents, sorry, in the survey, live uh, on or nearby to the North Brand Boulevard corridor. 54% would like to see some sort of bike lane uh, implemented on the project. 69% would like to see high visibility crosswalks as part of the project, and 30% would like to see curb extensions implemented. This is a summary of, of um, feedback received thus far for the various project alternatives that we'll be reviewing in subsequent slides showing um, thus far a preference for alternative 1A from the community. Now we'll go over the project area and some of the surrounding conditions. This again, this, uh, the, the corridor limits are Brand, North Brand Boulevard between Glendale Boulevard to Mountain Street is delineated by a white rectangular box on the screen. As you can see, it's on North Brand Boulevard, just above uh, Glen Oaks Boulevard. This shows the, uh, the land use surrounding the North Brand Boulevard uh, corridor. And the takeaways from this uh, map are, are uh, we see that uh, midpoint at the Stalker and North Brand intersection. From there to the south, there's a combination of different land uses, of various land uses, including office space, commercial, and religious worship. Whereas north of Stalker, um, we see a, a change. There's less variety in the land use with a, a, a heavy shift towards multifamily dwellings and, and house of worship. Uh, this shows uh, um, regarding the traffic signals or the transportation system. There are three traffic signals along the corridor at Glen Oaks, Dryden and Stalker. Uh, in, in this map, we see a uh, connection to the transit network. There are several opportunities for active transportation modes to connect both to B-Line, Metro buses, as well as bicycle facilities. The uh, B-Line shown in green, uh, Metro buses in orange, and the uh, magenta or purple would be the bicycle facilities. We'll go over now some of the existing street street configurations, as well as the quick build draft design concepts. The existing configuration of North Brand Boulevard is, um, in terms of traffic lanes, are two traffic lanes in each direction. Parking, existing parking is diagonal parking. The width varies uh, um, depending on the area from seven and a half feet to eight feet wide. Uh, the overall parking supplies are, are uh, 227 stalls and the curb to curb width of Brand Boulevard, Boulevard is 100 feet, which, uh, which uh, results in wide intersection crossings at the intersections. Uh, now we'll go over each of the alternatives. Uh, there are a total of, of six after you sort them out with uh, 1A, 1B, and so on. So alternative 1A uh, shows the traffic lane reductions uh, from two lanes in each direction to one lane in each direction. The, uh, the center turn lane um, on the existing section of Brand Boulevard will be maintained. Parking will maintain diagonal striping, uh, but will be a consistent width of seven and a half feet uh, um, within the, the project. Uh, parking supply, because of the uh, consistency in the parking stalls, actually increases uh, by seven stalls over the corridor, or by 3%. And the proposed bike lane facilities um, are, are um, curbside class four cycle track, uh, which is a dedicated bicycle path that's protected with a four foot buffer between the, uh, the bicycle and the, uh, and the parking lanes or the park diagonal parking. At the intersections, there would be curb extensions where possible and wider crosswalks and, and uh, bike crossings. This now uh, shows a, a more of a design level concept of the southern section of Brand Boulevard between Glen Oaks and Dryden and shows the, uh, the green bike lanes that are running parallel to the curb and adjacent with the diagonal parking inset from the uh, bicycle uh, cycle tracks. This is now the north segment between Dryden and Mountain that uh, maintains the uh, consistent uh, cycle track adjacent to the curb and the diagonal parking. Alternative two, uh, sorry, alternative 1B is very similar to 1A, 
with the exception that in the existing two-way left turn lane on, uh, on Brand Boulevard, there would be planters implemented in the, in the center turn lane. So um, parking would be maintained in diagonal, uh, but the parking supply would decrease by approximately 13 stalls, and that's because of the lack of the uh, left turn movements that will be allowed in and out of the driveways. Then, then there's U-turns that would be allowed at the signalized intersections, and that resulted in some parking loss. Uh, the bike lanes would still consist, as in Alternative 1A, as the Class 4 cycle track adjacent to the curb. This is now uh, Alternative 1B, and we see uh, that the, the big difference between 1B and 1A are the planters in that center median area. And this is the north segment. A longer segment of the planter areas is, is visible on, on this map. Alternative 2A. Uh, still proposes a reduction from two travel lanes in each direction to one travel lane in each direction. And the uh, parking design would be maintained at the angled parking. However, uh, the, uh, the width of the parking stalls would be increased to eight feet wide. Uh, parking supply, as a result, would, re uh, would reduce slightly uh, by nine stalls along the corridor. And the bike lane would still consist of the curbside running class four cycle track with the uh, four-foot buffer. Uh, and each of these concepts would take advantage of any opportunities to install curb extensions at the intersections. And this is now a design level layout of the alternative 2A, and very similar to 1A, except for the wider uh, diagonal parking from seven and a half feet to eight foot. Alternative 2B, uh, essentially the same as alternative 2A, except that this, this alternative will implement uh, planters in the center two-way left turn lane. Um, again, uh, because that limits the uh, left turns from occurring from the center, uh, that results in a reduction of, of parking stalls as uh, the design accommodates for U-turn moves at the signalized intersections. The uh, bike lane facilities would still consist of curbside class four uh, cycle tracks. And here's uh, an example of alternative 2B with the planters in the center median and still diagonal parking and the cycle track along curbside. So alternative three, um, this alternative is from the uh, 2012 bicycle transportation plan that, that outlined uh, this as an alternative. And uh, what that consists of is maintaining the two travel lanes in each direction on Brand Boulevard. Uh, but reducing the lane width slightly to 11 feet. Uh, the parking design would then be reconfigured from a front-in diagonal parking to a back back-in diagonal parking. And uh, parking supply would be reduced by 59 stalls because of the, uh, the configuration of the back-in and, and, um, and, and impacts with the driveways. And the bike lane would be different than in the previous alternatives in this one. The bike lane would be a six-foot striped bike lane with no buffer. Uh, it would be directly in front of the back-end diagonal parking. At the intersections, again, curb extensions would be installed where possible. This is now a design level uh, a plan showing the configuration of the back-end diagonal parking with the uh, six-foot bike lane in front on the, on the uh, travel lane side with no buffer in between. And this is now the north segment of North Brand Boulevard showing uh, the back end uh, diagonal parking alternative. Alternative four um, involves uh, converting um, all of the diagonal parking on, on Brand Boulevard to from diagonal to parallel parking. Two travel lanes will still be maintained in each direction, slight reduction in the, uh, in the lane width and uh, parking supply would be impacted by 61%. There'd be a 61% reduction in parking going from the angle parking to the parallel parking. The uh, bicycle facilities would, uh, would uh, consist of a class four cycle track um, with a seven foot bike lane and a four foot buffer between the bicycles and the parked vehicles, and the intersections would take advantage of any opportunities for curb extensions. And this is now a design level view of what that uh, could look like with the uh, bike lanes running parallel to the curb, the parking on the, on the travel lane side uh, acting as a buffer between bicyclists and the through lanes. 
and this is now the north segment from Dryden to Mountain. So this is a summary that uh, goes over all the different, the six different alternatives that we just went over. Uh, this one summarizes the uh, impact to the travel lanes, the, uh, the type of parking design, whether it's angled, back in diagonal or parallel, and goes over the impacts to the parking supply, whether there's an increase, decrease, and what that impact is. It also outlines the uh, type of bicycle facility and the, uh, the treatment uh, opportunities at the intersections for curb extensions. Uh, this now shows what potentially uh, could be implemented as, as placemaking features uh, in this project. And now, uh, as far as the next steps, uh, uh, the project is still in the community engagement uh, uh, portion, and that's going to be ongoing. There's additional community touch points that will be conducted. And, uh, and one of the important elements is to uh, consolidate that community feedback along with uh, uh, feedback from the Transportation and Parking Commission and ultimately direction from council to uh, select the uh, preferred alternative. And uh, at that point, the project will move forward and, and be built uh, for the uh, community to engage in and the evaluation stage to um, uh, commence. And with that, that concludes the presentation, and I'd be glad to take some comments or questions. Thank you so much. Great presentation. So I'll open it to the commissioners for any questions. Yes, I have some comments and questions. Okay. Um, so uh, <clears throat> looking at, at, at these options, it's um, clear to me that there's sort of a confluence around 1A beyond community um, support for that option, which seemed very clear. Um, just looking at the nature of this project, um, uh, you know, its its main goal being to make this a street where, you know, walking and biking are possible for all age and ability um, users. Um, it seems like a great um, a great application of these funds, and thanks a lot to staff for going after these for this um, project. Um, I just think, uh, so looking at it as a, as a project, it seems like, um, you know, th there is, there's an addition of extra stalls on 1A. Um, you have the protected lanes. Um, and it also seems the most in, in keeping with the idea of a demonstration. This is to see how it works. It's not overly complicated um, as maybe putting uh, median stuff in the median, as in 1B may be. It seems like it's a great, simple test of concept. Um, so I highly, you know, I really think that this is the best option, you know, and see to see how this works. Uh, my question is, I noticed on, on these plans that the, sorry, I noticed on these plans that, so southbound, basically turning onto Glen Oaks, uh, switches over to green box sharrows for bike facilities. And I was wondering if there's any uh, ability to improve that or upgrade that. Um, one of the nice features here um, that I really appreciate is the way the lane runs all the way on the north side in slightly different formats, but even near Trader Joe's, which is, you know, it's a busy area, it's more dangerous, it'll help bring people into these facilities to have that go all the way through. So in terms of the south side, uh, you know, opposite there, um, is there anything that could be done to extend that facility all the way to Glen Oaks where there's a bike lane? A chairperson pro tem Nazarian and, and uh, Commissioner Lester, um, that's a valuable feedback, and we can certainly um, pass that along to the uh, consultant design team to, to look into that, that possibility, sure. Great, thanks. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Very clear, very well said. Um, I guess I do have a couple questions. Um, or comments. I, w I guess I'll start by saying um, I really appreciate the different alternatives. 
I was a little uh, surprised by the number of responses, which I found small um, for a city of our size to have 10 responses. I know that it's a struggle for you guys to get kind of feedback, so I'm, I'm particularly interested in what the next phases for community outreach would be. Um, it doesn't surprise me that out of the 10 responses we saw a lot of interest in 1A, which I think also seems very sound, but I, it's such a small statistic to get feedback from. Um, so I guess let me start by asking, uh, and I don't know if we would do back and forth or if it's a, you know, a question that you kind of add and, and let us know, but um, what the next steps for the outreach would entail. And I hope, um, I see that there's some touch points, but I'm, I'm wondering what else may garner some, some broader responses. Um, I guess a point of order, do I pause now and let him answer or you? Yes, great, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um Commissioner Bonsing, thank you for that for that question. Uh, one of the key takeaways in the in the meetings that we've been having with the consultant team and 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 we share those concerns about making sure we capture that uh, an appropriate quantity of community feedback um, is that they plan on going door to door. They they plan on doing some door to door outreach because uh, there's no better way than to really go to the facility and speak to those people. So that's, I think, one of the most critical next steps mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be conducted. Thank you. And I, I will say, having walked this area myself on a few different occasions, either gone to some of the you know, our best stores or restaurants, it's a wonderful place to take a stroll. So I, you know, any idea that would promote walkability uh, along with the bicycle route, I think, is excellent. Um, I, again, I think the 1A makes a lot of sense. Um, I certainly appreciate seeing the protected bike lanes. I think a reduction uh, in the lane makes sense. You don't ever see the need for really two lanes in each direction, at least in my experience, having driven there, um, having had a dentist that, you know, have all my experiences there. Um, and that actually leads me to a point on the table. I think when you go through the different options, um, you see reduce two to one for 1A, 1B, two to one, and then at the bottom two say maintain four. I think there's an inconsistency in whether you mean each direction or total lanes. Um, uh, can you? Uh, yeah, I can clarify. Uh, so on the summary table, mm -hmm. okay. if you look at, for example, 1A, it says lanes, reduce two to one. You mean in each direction. Correct. Whereas on the fourth option, it says maintain four. But that's four total. Um, yeah, in the, in the this is an alternative four. Yes. So alternative four is the uh, the um, the parallel parking, and, and so the intent was to to maintain the the same lane configuration that we have now. I guess my point would be you're either saying four total lanes or you're saying two or one in each direction. You're oh, I see. I see. We'll, we'll Understand. clarify Understand. that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we'll Thank clarify you. that. Thank um, you. Just to get lost mm -hmm. in the details, you know, I have to add a lot of value here. Um, okay, so then the the other thing that I would say, besides the engagement, um, I, I understand that medians are so desirable. I love our broad boulevards where we have, you know, wide sidewalks, lots of trees in the medians. It also makes sense here to me the the planters were kind of less significant um, because you do have the road is somewhat more narrow than some of our grand um, boulevards. Uh, I would also just add, you know, given this um, demonstration project, it would to me would feel like a lost potential to not do something really special with that red car terminus at the top. That is a very special historic moment that is still present. Um, so that's where, uh, let's see, uh, is it Mountain? and brand. So what's left in that little uh, the part in the median is the terminus for what was the red car line, right? That is, you can still walk it, and if you know it, you can go look at it, and there's not much left. But if even if there was a, a marker or some kind of active, something that indicated that, I think that would be neat. Um, I think that it speaks to, again, some of the history of Glendale being a suburb of Los Angeles, and this was really, you know, the red car was a stop that people would take um, to really kind of experience and explore Glendale back in the day. Um, so that's, the, I get excited about that when I see this area. Um, so those are, those are my comments, and I do think that 1A seems um, very plausible. I, I don't think that the, you know, as I mentioned, the keeping, the maintaining of the four parking lanes seems um, that necessary. 
And I don't need, know that we see the benefits in the stall increase with parallel parking or the uh, back and diagonal. So thank you. Thank you. Well, by the way, we'll come back. So this is a lot to digest for all of us. So don't, don't feel we're done. We can come back and circle more questions. So I'll, I'll start with one main questions I have because I'm looking at the four options, alternative one and two versus three and four. It's a big difference versus going down to two lanes on both two lane each direction or one lane each direction. So what's the justification? What is the ADT today on brand? Uh, can we justify one lane each direction? I guess that's my main question to start with. Yes, um, so um, Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian and members of the commission, uh, I don't have that information readily available, but looking at the traffic volumes and traffic counts, that is a component of the project. And, and as we've seen up to, to date at this point, um, the uh, North Brand Corridor could be converted to one lane in each direction without creating, say, the, the traffic congestion issues. So we're not going to have any issue with the signal going down level of service or anything. It, you, you believe that's justifiable to go down to one lane each direction? That is something that's being looked at as part of the project, yes. Okay. Um, just looking at different alternative, another comment I had was on the angled parkings. So one of the concern I have, which I'm obviously I'm leaning toward one lane, if we can justify that, I don't see also any reason for two lane brand boulevard and we can utilize all these great ideas for different alternative one and two. But one of the concerns I have when you go down one lane, especially on one B, when you have those planter on the median, it's when people stop for angled parking and they literally, they're gonna block that lane. So I'm looking at this section and I see 14 feet for angled parking and you have 18 feet drive lane and I'm not sure if that's enough to have a stop car and the next car pass without blocking the entire street. So that's one of my concern, maybe if you can look at that. And for that reason, I'm more leaning toward 1A versus 1B because in 1A you have that 12 feet wide median that it's open to utilize for passing. Um, if you don't mind going to that slide that you had the community answers, uh, if you can go back to that slide, is that possible? Yeah, can you help me with that, Lisa? It's in here. There you go, thank you. How did we put the questions out to get this result? Was there a question, yes or no? How was the question? Did we just tell them, ask them, you like 1A, one 1B? One How was the question, Eri? Well, I'll have to touch base with the, uh, with the consultant team that, was, that did the community outreach. Uh, my understanding, it was, uh, it was uh, various types of questions to the community. Uh, but this one particularly uh, hones in on their uh, view towards the different alternatives. Can we go back one more slide, please? I think the other one had some, or maybe, n never mind. Never mind, it's good. Um, what was the reason for seven and a half feet parking versus eight feet? I noticed that in different alternative. Uh, um, so, um, sorry about that. Uh, I think it was Pro seven and a half on one and two and eight yes. on three and four, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, we, uh, the project team received um, in the stakeholders meetings, uh, feedback from the surrounding community and the concerns of parking. That was one of the critical components to uh, maintain parking, not only to serve uh, the, the land uses on North Brand, but to um, prevent any sort of spill over to adjacent communities should the parking uh, be reduced. So uh, the, the benefit of looking at the seven and a half versus the eight is to see if we could maintain the same amount of parking and yes. with the seven and a half foot option, we were actually able to increase it slightly, which is a, 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 a positive thing for the community. Uh, with eight foot, I, I believe we, uh, we also maintain, to maintain the parking relatively consistent. Okay. Just for my own feedback here, so obviously seven and a half to eight, you're gonna increase it about, I guess, seven, eight percent. 
my experience is always out of the 10 compact parking, always one gets, you know, not parked because people don't park perfectly. So most of the time I notice that the seven and a half doesn't at the end of the day give you any addition. Yes, you will paint more parking stalls, but I don't think you'll get more par cars parked. So just, just an opinion here, I may be wrong. Um, about the U-turn, do we have to have the U-turns on every signal? Because I know that's one reason you're losing some parking stalls. Are we obligated to have U-turns on every intersection signalized? Yes, the, the U-turns are a function of the alternatives where, where the um, planters are being proposed in the center two-way left turn lane. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple uh, land use access driveways along the corridor. So um, prohibiting those left turns or, or limiting them would mean they still, you know, vehicles still need to get to their driveway. So uh, yeah, I think we need to uh, provide those U-turn opportunities at the, at, the, at the intersections. Makes sense. But I think you're saying only when the planter is there, because uh, when the, oh, Correct. you got that. Yes, I was, that, that I, was the case. The light bulb movement yes, for me. That okay. was, yeah, I don't think we have that in 1A. It's only 1B. Um, so what is the funding? Where, where is the funding coming from, construction funding for all of this? Yeah, so it was uh, from a um, 2018 uh, SCAG, Southern California Association of Governments, uh, sustainable, sustainable Communities Grant. Uh, specifically slated at um, providing opportunities to local agencies to provide these quick build demonstration projects. And uh, so City of Glendale was successfully awarded a, a grant for $500,000 uh, that would include uh, the design um, as well as the implementation. So that's secured, the 500000 we have that to spend on this? Yes, yes. Okay. And the schedule, you said you believe in another six to nine months will we'll be done with this, uh, design and construction? By uh, spring of 2023, yes. Okay. Um, I didn't obviously study all this in detail, but you mentioned curb extension. Is that function on all alternatives or only several of them? Or uh, yes, um, North Brand Boulevard is so wide that um, on on the on any of the alternatives will have the opportunity to explore the curb extensions and with the goal being to provide a shorter crossing for pedestrians so are you looking today for recommendation of one of these four alternatives from us or what are we exactly looking for as far as the motion here at the end yes as, uh, we are looking for um, feedback direction from the Transportation and Parking Commission uh, to select a preferred alternative. Okay, then I'll open it again to the commissioners to mention which alternative you like. Chair, uh, we, I think we have one caller. Sure. Would you like to take a caller? Sure. Good afternoon, Mr. Mike Borisov. You're on the air. And you have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Mike Borisov, and I live on North Brand. I support this project, specifically Proposal 1A. Um, I currently attend GCC and take the local bus network to get there. To this, uh, to get there, uh, so this project would greatly benefit me uh, and directly benefit me. Um, I believe it's a project that will reduce pollution, eliminate accidents with pedestrians and bicyclists, and increase mobility for all residents, specifically the elderly and school-aged children. Uh, it is also nice that it will add on to Glendale sustainability and overall look since there would be plants added and a pro pro protective barrier created for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, and also extending the uh, crossing and curbs. I have seen a lot of elderly residents run out of time across the street because it's just frankly so long and by the time they're halfway through, it's already like a green light, so it would greatly benefit with this uh, proposal on it. Thank you. Was that Thank you. Was that the only call we had? Okay. Okay, I'll bring it back again to the commissioners for additional questions or comments, anything you have? This is Shauna Bonston. Um, I would imagine that not part of the funding, I just was staring at Ariel and it looks like one side of it, uh, there are portions on the western side that have a continuous median, uh, not median, um, uh, I'm spacing on this patch of grass word. Thank you, Parkway. <laughs> uh, 
um, continuous parkway, where is on the eastern side, it does not. Where might such funds be located to make it consistent? Or is that not being pursued given the water drought that we're in? Rephrase a question out of that. Yes. No, uh, are you looking at a particular alternative that, that we can? No, share? no. Okay. I guess it was, I was mm -hmm. staring at this thinking, wow, okay, thinking $500,000 to make these improvements. You know, it, it goes quickly. Um, and then also noticing the, st the status of some of the trees and, and <laughs> the landscaping. So maybe that's an aside that we can think of like a, a, a longer term goal to kind of make the two sides consistent. There, there could be a little bit of work done with landscaping. Um, that's one comment. I would say the other comment, like I said, I think 1A does make a lot of sense. I, I personally wouldn't be able to stand behind anything that has only 10 respondents. Um, and again, I, you know, I, I hope to garner more interest from folks. Um, I see the picture of the people that represent like half of the 10 <laughs> right there. Um, but I'm, I'm certainly um, hopeful that we can find some, some additional ways, including, as you mentioned, going do door to door, particularly the residential um, area nearby. Because I know that a lot of the businesses will have an opinion about parking, but I'm also curious about the residences. And, and I like the caller said, the kind of accessibility uh, and, and livability for the neighborhood it provides. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Just one last comment on my end. I like alternative 1B if we can solve the backing of the traffic. So for that, if we can maybe narrow the median from 12 feet down to 10 or 8 and put the planter boxes, or if we can't solve the backing issue, then alternative 1A would be my suggestion. So just my feedback there. With that, I think if there is no other question or comment, we can move to the, we need to make a motion or? to suggest one of the four alternative? Okay, I guess I'll, I'll do that then. I'll make a motion to suggest alternative 1B with modified planter width for traffic lane issue. If we can get a second on that. Then a new motion for anyone? Sure, I'll make a motion for 1A please. I second that. I'll take roll call. Uh, Chair Christian Azarian. Uh, yes. Commissioner Lester. Yes. Commissioner Bonstein. Yes. Commissioner Yakubian. We can move to the next, next item then, please. Item 6B is installation of speed bumps on Bruce Avenue between Glenwood Road and Glen Oaks Boulevard. Yes, we have a presentation and Mr. Casanova is gonna do that for us as well. Please, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Imrani. And uh, Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian, members of the, uh, of the commission, uh, this presentation is regarding traffic calming measures on Bruce Avenue. A brief uh, outline of the presentation will include a uh, background of, of the request for traffic calming, going over a vicinity map, location, and street view of the location as well as the screening, a discussion on the screening evaluation and engineering study, as well as special considerations that were taken into account um, in the uh, recommendations, and, and lastly, going over those findings and recommendations. So the, the project background started with uh, a new Starbucks that was uh, put into operation at the intersection of Glen Oaks, <coughs> excuse me, and Grandview Avenue intersection, or some of us may know it as the old KFC site. Um, almost immediately, uh, public works staff uh, began to receive complaints regarding the uh, Starbucks drive-through that was backing up onto Grandview Avenue and creating safety concerns. Um, some of those safety, oh, um, sorry. Um, so one of the active, uh, um, as part of the resolving those safety concerns, staff work with, uh, with Starbucks 
to ultimately um, implement uh, street modifications with signage as well as Starbucks uh, internal circulation to address those issues and concerns. Um, after those concerns were resolved, uh, an active community member that lives on Bruce Avenue uh, expressed to staff that um, all of a sudden the Starbucks uh, 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 traffic was cutting through the Bruce Avenue neighborhood and speeding. Um, staff then evaluated uh, Bruce Avenue for traffic calming measures on three different occasions with four separate data sets in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Um, Generally, uh, regarding the type of traffic calming measure, the community is not in support of any other type other than speed humps. They're in strong support of speed humps on Bruce Avenue. Um, in uh, staff's review of the neighborhood traffic calming uh, program criteria and the data, Bruce Avenue met uh, the, the, the traffic calming program criteria, uh, all except for the traffic volume criteria. This is a, uh, a map of the location of Bruce Avenue. As we can see, it runs uh, parallel to Grandview and is near the Grandview and Glen, Glen Oaks uh, Boulevard intersection. This is now a zoomed in view of Bruce Avenue showing its proximity to Glen Oaks and Grandview uh, and, and uh, as well as being parallel to Grandview Avenue. This shows the uh, residential and aerial view showing the residential context of Bruce Avenue as well as the location of the Starbucks. This is a street view of Bruce Avenue looking northbound. And this is uh, looking southbound on Bruce Avenue. An engineering analysis uh, following the neighborhood traffic calming program procedures was uh, conducted by staff, uh, which included a screening evaluation on the street classification and, and whether or not the street is in a residential zone. Bruce Avenue is a uh, local street, and so it meets that uh, screening uh, criteria, and it, is, it was confirmed that it is within a residential zone. An engineering study was then conducted that reviewed a 24-hour uh, speed in, in traffic volume counts on four separate 24-hour uh, uh, periods. And a uh, field investigation uh, was conducted by staff to confirm the roadway characteristics, street width, sign, striping, and, and geometry. Uh, staff conduct, uh, compared those findings with the neighborhood traffic calming program uh, criteria. And the findings were that the uh, speed, speed criteria and the other uh, neighborhood traffic calming program criteria were met with the exception of the minimum traffic volume criteria. This is a summary of the uh, four different traffic counts, 24 hour period traffic counts that were taken over the past few years. And uh, what we see are the dates that the counts were taken on, on the left column. And in the middle column are the, uh, the minimum criteria at the top required by the neighborhood traffic calming program, which is a thousand vehicles. And then below it are the traffic counts that were taken on each occasion. Uh, on the right are the 85th percentile speeds with a criteria of 30 miles per hour or higher. And in all those cases, the minimum speed criteria were met. Um, staff, uh, um, as part of the recommendations, took into account special considerations. Um, we know that the Starbucks uh, opened at the Glen Oaks and Grandview intersection where originally the drive-through access was from Grandview Avenue to the alley. Uh, we found that uh, the drive-through did queue up uh, onto northbound uh, Grandview Avenue and, and created safety issues. Uh, staff worked with Starbucks to resolve those issues on both some uh, on-street improvements as well as to the Starbucks site. And uh, in August 2020, um, that's when all those improvements were implemented, prohibiting the entrance to the alley and the, and the uh, drive-through from Grandview Avenue. And Starbucks modified their drive-through circulation such that the drive-through access would now be from Glen Oaks Boulevard. Um, additional considerations that were taken were that in, in modifying, making the modifications to address the safety concerns that uh, the proximity of the Starbucks and the circulations routes in, inadvertently resulted in, in cut-through traffic vehicles on Bruce Avenue. 
Um, because one of the primary goals of the neighborhood traffic calming program is to eliminate or discourage non-local cut through vehicular traffic within residential neighborhoods, um, um, staff took these special considerations into account. And uh, the neighborhood traffic calming program also allows engineering judgment to supersede uh, the criteria and guidelines in certain instances. This is a, a graphical depiction of the original Starbucks drive-through circulation where um, really all of the entry points uh, to the drive-through were from Grandview Avenue um, at the alley. The solid red line shows uh, the backup of the vehicles that were often encountered during the peak periods uh, of, of, uh, of the drive through uh, of the Starbucks drive through These are some pictures showing some of that back up onto Grandview Avenue and, and blocking the northbound lane. So staff uh, again work with Starbucks um, and evaluates, evaluated several options and ultimately uh, prohibited or restricted access to the alley from Grandview Avenue, both uh, northbound from the north or from the south, and reconfigured the drive through entry to enter off of Glen Oaks uh, Boulevard. However, that also opened up opportunities for cut through tra or for traffic from the north to access the drive through to cut through Bruce Avenue. This is now an expanded view of, of uh, the issue that began to occur where southbound traffic on Grandview Avenue, instead of uh, going to the Starbucks and turning into the alley, uh, found a, a, another convenient route, which is using Glen Oaks, uh, sorry, Glenwood Road uh, to Bruce Avenue to access the Starbucks. Um, staff also uh, conducted some uh, other um, enhancements to alleviate the issue. Uh, in November 2020, uh, staff installed 25 mile per hour pavement markings to supplement the existing speed limit signs on Bruce Avenue to address some of the concerns coming in from the residents regarding speeding. In December 2020, uh, staff installed no loitering signs in the alley to address more resident concerns regarding loitering and littering. And in May 2021, staff concluded coordination with Starbucks uh, to adjust their truck delivery routes um, that were on occasion using Bruce Avenue and redirect them to use other off ramps from the freeway and use Glen Oaks Boulevard uh, to access the, the uh, Starbucks through the alley. Uh, so these are the findings and recommendations uh, summary. Uh, Bruce Avenue met all of the uh, neighborhood traffic calming program criteria but with the exception of the traffic volume criteria. Bruce Avenue uh, uh, does provide a convenient alternate route to Starbucks from the north, that's been confirmed. And uh, the speed humps can potentially discourage that non-local cut through traffic on Bruce Avenue and address uh, some of the community speeding concerns. Installation of uh, speed humps on Bruce Avenue is consistent with the primary goals of the neighborhood traffic calming program uh, and that is reducing cut through traffic within residential neighborhoods. Um, a petition was uh, distributed in the community by, by the um, uh, community captain, let's call it, and uh, 25 out of the 27 residential dwelling occupants signed the petition for a 93% support. Um, so considering these uh, uh, elements mentioned, uh, staff recommends the installation of two speed humps on Bruce Avenue between Glenwood Road and Glen Oaks Boulevard, uh, particularly with the special consideration of the Starbucks cut through traffic on Bruce uh, impacts on Bruce Avenue. Should uh, the Transportation and Parking Commission uh, support staff's recommendation? Um, uh, these are this graphical, this is a graphical depiction of the approximate location of the proposed speed humps on Bruce Avenue. And that concludes the presentation, and I can take uh, comments and questions. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll open to the commissioners, but real quick question. I assume we have audience or someone, uh, only one? Okay. There's, there's apparently one more, I think.
during there's any procedural before and after commissioners or we can go either way for the comments on the audience chair pro tem um the commission could um take comments from the public and then start discussion or you could do it vice versa it's as the commission pleases yeah. um if commissioners are okay let's hear the audience first okay we'll hear first let's see mr john xagian i hope i said the last name correctly Good evening. No, you didn't, but nobody does. <laughs> Even my own mother mispronounces my let's, name. Let's, so. let's hear it then. <laughs> it's John Sajikian, uh, and I live at 1247 Bruce. Um, I'm here to support wholeheartedly the proposal for the speed humps. Um, I thank Mr. Casanova for the presentation and the report. I, I agree with everything. The only footnote I would add is the following. I know there was one criterion that wasn't met, the traffic volume. When you as the commission consider that, consider the following, that Bruce is a very short street. It's only three blocks long, end to end. So this isn't just a local street, it's a hyper-local street. And I say that as someone who's lived in this neighborhood since 1987 and at this block in this house since 2003. I know this is a traffic uh, and transportation commission but to those of us who live there and call this our home, it's not just a traffic issue, it's not just a transportation issue, it's a quality of life issue, and more importantly, a public safety issue. Um, my 17, soon to be 18 year old daughter has lived in that house her whole life, played outside. <laughs> I've never been as concerned for her safety as now when she backs out of our driveway. and. That was not the case up until a couple of years ago, and it shouldn't be the case. Anxiety, fear, the, stress, th those aren't things that used to occur on Bruce Avenue, driving on Bruce. That stuff is more for driving on Glen Oaks. Um, the last thing I'll add is uh, I know 25 of 27 of, of our neighbors, us, uh, signed a petition. That doesn't mean that there are two dissenters, it's just that two people were unreachable. Um, I don't know of any dissent or opposition to this. As far as I know, this is unanimous on our block, and I, I certainly hope that the commission's vote would reflect that unanimity. Thank, Thank you. you. I think our next speaker is Mr. Vasily Patron. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, before I start saying anything, I just want to play something for you real quick. Uh, I want you guys to pay attention to the sound that's going to come out of this video for you guys. Are we all able to hear that? Okay. That's what we live through every day, all day. Um, I have a 15-month-old child who is extremely active, and now he is walking. Um, he has a tendency to try to make it to the street. He loves to go to the street. He doesn't know what it is, so he's very inquisitive. Um, if we turn our backs for a moment, he can make it to that street pretty quickly. I have a neighbor here, Dave and Brianne, who know my child very well. Uh, I moved into the neighborhood in 2019. Because it was quiet, it was lined with trees, it was beautiful, and that's what we wanted. Starbucks moved in, and there was no questionnaire about the impact that it would have in the neighborhood. It was just put in, and being a business owner, in all my property, I have a gas station and McDonald's. Before we built this property, we were questioned by the city of the traffic. How are we going to get our deliveries? How is it going to impact the neighborhood? We received none of this. It was just put in and we had to deal with it. Uh, we beg, pretty much begging for speed bumps and we're here today to talk with you guys. Um, it's not only just the speed as well, it's also the trash, it's also the youth who like to sit in front of our house, smoke tobacco, throw their trash on the parkway, in the streets, it's become a nightmare. It's 
not nice anymore. If it wasn't for the neighbors and us caring about our neighborhood, we would move out tomorrow. And plus, we can't buy another house because it's so expensive. <laughs> um, so I'm here just to plea with you to please approve this, um, I guess this petition that we put forth uh, to slow down these youth and some of these adults who have complete disregard for our neighborhood before something happens. And that's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Not implying that anyone over went over the limit, but do we have a timer usually? Yes, sorry, okay. I didn't put the beep. That's okay. That's okay. So our uh, next and I think last speaker, and hopefully I'm not going to butcher this one, Brienne Van Tool. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> it's Van Tile, which it doesn't look like at all. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of reiterate um, what everyone else has said, um, and to also just say, um, so my husband David and I kind of. Uh, took the helm from some of our other neighbors when we moved in a year ago to kind of spearhead getting uh, the speed bumps moving. And so we initially, we weren't sure what the process was, so we sort of created our own um, uh, petition. <laughs> and for that one, we were able to actually get a signature from every single member of our block. So I do know that our block is unanimous. Um, and then from there, we were able to work with the city to get the proposal and get the new petition. And so that's where we got um, the 25 out of 27. Um, and so I, I know that our city, or that our block is very, very supportive. Um, we have a lot of elderly who are still driving and that makes us really nervous for them backing out. It isn't so much the volume as the speed um, is just very concerning. Um, we have multiple videos of them going so fast that it actually set off car alarms. Like it's just, the the speed is what really I think scares everybody. Um, and uh, you could see from that map that yes, they can, like anyone going to Starbucks can go on Glen Oaks, the one direction, but if they're coming from the other direction of Glen Oaks, there's no way for them to turn in without speeding up and then coming around and going down our block. So it's not even that it's the traffic from the north, it's the traffic from the other side that is really concerning because you can really hear them speed all the way around that block. Um, and I, you know, I don't know exactly what we can do for all of the blocks, but I know for our block, we, we'd really like speed bumps to just help keep everybody safe um, and just, I understand there's going to be traffic um, and people want their coffee and that's great. I just want them to do it at a safe speed. Um, so that's, yeah. thank you. Thank you. No more speaker. We're good. Okay, so I guess commissions, questions, comments, potentially motion. I feel like I went first last time, but oh, oh, good. Okay, I just um, I do have a, a couple comments and thoughts. Um, you know, I I want to start by thanking the folks that showed up today. I really heard your um, compassion and your your strong feelings about the you know the quality of your neighborhood. I, I will start by saying what I know of your neighborhood, I adore. Uh, so I can imagine how you want to keep it special. I will also say that, you know, when I think of traffic calming measures, um, I don't love speed humps. Uh, I think that th sometimes there are other options that are better. That said, I actually think your street has some of those already. So one of the things that you look at for um, reducing speed is also looking at kind of trees and the narrowness of the street and even the fact that you have a curve. So you kind of have like all the features in your favor to not be having this problem and yet you are still having the problem. So I think it's made a good case for why speed humps would make sense here. Um, again, this, the street trees, you can see that. I'm, I'm staring at my own uh, Google map here. It's evident that, that Bruce Avenue is very special in terms of um, the street trees alone. Um, you know, the criteria for the number, they don't concern me so much because if we're looking at a thousand count, I imagine that's pre-COVID. And I'm still not sure that our traffic counts are kind of up to what they were. So I'm not, you know, I guess I'm projecting here, but it seems kind of close enough. 
Um, and it sounds like I heard two different things. So I guess this is a little bit of a question, but it sounds like there's both queuing, which I imagine could be stalled cars waiting to be served, but also there's speeding. So there's also, there's maybe two things happening at different times. Um, I appreciate that the city went through and kind of helped Starbucks reconfigure. I can see that there's been a lot of problem solving trying to address this issue. Um, you know, and the fact that we're using an alley, that's what alleys are supposed to be for. Uh, so I see a lot of solutions kind of being thrown at it. I, I think, you know, there's a conundrum where um, drive throughs can be problematic and they can be very impactful to neighborhoods and not all drive throughs are the same. So we see this a lot with In-N-Out. We see this a lot with Starbucks. There's certain very, very popular drive throughs that um, are kind of impossible to meet the demands without having these kind of impacts to the neighborhood. Um, so, uh, and I, I, it's kind of unfortunate. I wish, you know, there was a way that Starbucks could <laughs> do, do more. Here we are kind of trying to problem solve and it's terrific that people are getting caffeinated. Although I wonder if they're like pre-caffeinated angry as they drive through your neighborhood and then caffeinated, you know, I don't know, amped up afterwards. Uh, so you, you wouldn't expect, I don't know that I would have thought of coffee shops as, as producing this kind of um, draw to the neighborhood, but I can see that happening. So um, I, I'm in support of the proposal. And again, I appreciate the compassion uh, brought by the neighborhood and thoughtfulness. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lester. Thank you. And also, yeah, thank you for the comments. I live in Northwest Glendale. I know this area really well. And I probably know some of these drivers you mentioned, because I both uh, drive and ride my bike with my son to school through this area. I use um, Glenwood, and so I know I know what it's like there. Um, yeah, um, I appreciate those the comments from Commissioner Bonson too. The that that all makes a lot of sense. Um, there are when you see the the speed humps, it seems like a maybe a crude way to deal with the problem and yet it's hard to to see a great alternative in a lot of cases um, i'll mention that uh, when i when i was first on the commission i think one of the very first things that i heard was we were we were approving um speed humps over it was near verdugo it was like colorado and verdugo the street called griswold um exact same thing it was a starbucks um came into the neighborhood, suddenly the traffic pattern shifted. And then um, I, I believe there was a proposal that came to uh, planning, design, it was planning, but it, it, I think it was um, Glendale and maybe Harvard, they were proposing another Starbucks drive through there, which was rejected, it was sent back. Uh, there's a pattern here that I think it's not not too hard to discern um, when you look at the way the car demand increases around these kind of sprawly uses you know this is the kind of thing you expect way out in this exurb somewhere where everyone goes through drive throughs for everything but everyone crushes in and then you know you make you try one mitigation to to move the problem to, to fix the problem and it just moves one street over one alley over one you know whatever's the n nearest alternative it's like a balloon you know you squeeze one part and then the other part comes out you know so um i'm really sympathetic i mean the especially the comments about the the child i mean i have a two-year-old um and ever since i also have a nine-year-old and i mean it's a never-ending concern to look at the roadway as this sense of great peril you know, the roaring cars, um, the illegal speeding. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sympathetic and, uh, you know, in, in support of this idea. Thank you. It's just to summarize everything that's been said here. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of support for a proposal, and I'm not against it for sure. I seriously hope this is going to help, actually. I'm a big coffee drinker, as you can tell, but I can't believe what people do for a cup of coffee. But I see it, I see it, and I do believe it. Um, good comment from Commissioner Lester about moving to the next street, and maybe we'll have the same presentation proposal for the street parallel to this, and hopefully it'll be enough of it that will stop this. I don't know if it will, but I think this is one relatively easy thing we can do, hoping for the best result, and I don't see any harm doing it. 
So with that said, I'm making a motion to approve this proposal for adding the speed bump on Bruce. I'll second it. I'll take roll call. Chairperson Azarian? Yes. Commissioner Lester? Yes. Commissioner Bonstein? Yes. Commissioner Yakubian. Thank I you, everyone. Thank you for the presentation, and thank you for showing up. Item 6C is installation of raised pavement markers and thermoplastic bars on Adams Street between Scofield Dive, uh, Drive and Princeton Drive as a pilot program. Do we have a presentation? Mr. Chair, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chair uh, Person Pro, we have uh, another presentation. Tonight is Mr. Casanova Show, so I'll turn it over to him. Thank you, Mr. Imrani. I guess they say three is a charm, right? So uh, thank you all for being patient and listening. Um, uh, Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian, members of the commission, this presentation is regarding traffic calming measures on Adams Street. Uh, on the screen is a vicinity map of the uh, section of Adams Street we'll be reviewing today, and that is uh, Adams Street between Schofield and Princeton's Princeton Drive as shown on the map. Some of the background includes uh, the request for traffic calming measures on Adams Street. Uh, the, the request for traffic calming measures on Adams Street came from the community to address vehicle speeding concerns on Adams Street. Um, as a response to that uh, concern, staff conducted uh, both a screening evaluation and engineering study based on the neighborhood traffic calming program criteria. And uh, staff found that uh, Adam Street met all of the required cri criteria stipulated in the neighborhood traffic calming program for installation of traffic calming measures. However, Adam Street does not qualify for speed humps because it is on a, a fire department emergency response route. Uh, therefore, staff uh, recommends installation of a new innovative pilot program that we've d developed uh, that includes raised pavement markers and thermoplastic rumble bars to enhance driver awareness. Again, this is a, a blown up view of uh, the section of Adams Street where we're uh, proposing to implement uh, this pilot program, and that's on Adam Street between Schofield and Princeton Drive. And this is now an aerial view showing the uh, residential context of the area. This is a street view of Adam Street looking northbound. We see that it has double yellow lines, uh, four inch wide edge lines on each side that have been repainted since the picture. And this is now looking southbound on Adams Street uh, with the double yellow um, four inch uh, edge lines and parking on both sides of uh, Adams Street. An, in, an engineering analysis was conducted uh, following the neighborhood traffic calming program uh, procedures that included the screen, screening and evaluation and a review of the street classifications as well as whether or not the street is in a residential zone. Um, Adam Street is a community collector, uh, which does meet the neighborhood traffic calming program criteria for traffic calming measures, and uh, this section is within a residential zone. An engineering uh, study was then conducted, which included 24-hour speed and volume traffic counts, uh, field investigation, and uh, comparing the findings with the neighborhood traffic calming program criteria. Uh, staff's findings were that all of the uh, required criteria were met. Um, this is a review of the existing uh, traffic calming measures on Adams Street. Um, as we see on the right side of the, uh, of the exhibit or image that there are speed uh, feedback radar signs facing northbound. Uh, this is located uh, just north of Yale Drive. Uh, these speed feedback signs are intended to display the driver's speed up to a preset maximum, uh, making drivers aware uh, if they're traveling above that speed and uh, encouraging us, uh, them to slow down. This is now looking southbound, uh, similar on the right side. We see the, uh, the speed feedback or radar, uh, radar sign facing southbound traffic located just south of Cornell Drive. 
On this image, we see that there are also uh, four-inch white edge lines on each side of Adam Street, and uh, this image uh, highlights those. Uh, and uh, edge lines are typically installed uh, shadowing the parked areas uh, and working in, in uh, conjunction with the double yellow uh, striping on the roadway to create a narrow, uh, narrowing effect on the street and encouraging uh, slower, slower speeds. Uh, the uh, Public Works Department recently deployed a uh, permanent uh, slow streets program, um, and this included uh, this section of Adams Street, and uh, Public Works is working through some, some um, modification of the program, uh, but Adams Street was included in the phase one of the project. So um, um, the uh, feasibility of speed humps um, was reviewed, and uh, again, as mentioned previously, uh, although this section or the uh, the uh, the neighborhood traffic uh, calming criteria were met, this section is on a Glendale Fire Department emergency response route, as well as the block lengths are less than 500 feet. So uh, these two elements uh, uh, do not um, allow for speed humps to be installed on Adams Street. Alternatively, uh, staff developed a pilot program uh, that uh, uh, Public Works has tested out in the field. And uh, what that's composed of are several series of raised pavement markers and thermoplastic rumble bars that get uh, essentially stuck on with heat onto the ground. And as drivers drive over them, it creates that rumbling effect, uh, causing the drivers to to uh, command alert of uh, their su surroundings and situation and watch their speeds. Um, this is a, um, a real world uh, view of the test location uh, at the top showing an example of what this uh, pilot program looks like with the rumble bars alternating with the raised pavement markers. Uh, this now shows that the uh, proposed configuration at Adam Street includes a total of four installations, uh, two for each direction on, uh, on Adam Street, and, and we intend to install those in proximity of the, existing, the other existing traffic calming measures, which are the speed radar signs and the speed limit signs. So as drivers drive over, uh, the rumble bars commands attention to look at those speed radar signs, feedback signs and encourage the slower speeds. Um, understanding that these uh, have the potential of, uh, of noise impacts to the community, a uh, petition was circulated and, um, and 28 out of the 36 residents uh, along the, the, this corridor or this section that would, where the pilot program would be implemented supported the, uh, the pilot program, which equates to 78% support, um, and it says speed hump installation, but it's 78 uh, percent support for the uh, pilot program installation with the minimum and the neighborhood traffic calming program being at 75. So we're above the minimum support percentage. Um, so this is a summary of, of the fine staff findings and recommendations. Adam Street does meet the neighborhood traffic calming criteria um, uh, for installation of traffic calming measures. Adam Street does not qualify for speed humps because it is on an emergency response route and the, uh, the distance between intersections is less than 500 feet. Uh, but staff recommends installing um, a, this pilot program that we've developed and tested, uh, which uh, involves the installation of raised pavement markers in combination with thermoplastic rumble bars. The community uh, does support installation of this pilot program uh, by a percentage of 78%. And uh, upon implementation, staff will evaluate the pilot program and, um, and uh, stand by also to receive feedback from the community and evaluate whether or not uh, this pilot program would be uh, remain in place in the long term. And that uh, concludes the presentation. I'll take questions and comments. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. So commissioners, open for any questions, comments? Sure, thank you. Um, this is a very, yeah, it's a very special neighborhood in Glendale. Um, also had some experience there because my wife and I tried to buy a house there 10 years ago. Didn't get the house, but um, um, I have heard about this issue over time 
and uh, it seems clear that um, uh, something needs to be done. It's a straight, almost, it's a very long straight shot from the high point of the hill all the way back, all the way down to the square. There's a little turn right, right at the square, I guess. Um, I guess, um, you know, the one, one question that I would have about the strips, which I think are very interesting thing to try, is are they noisy for the residents? Um, that would be one question. And my other question would be, so uh, on the south side, the LA side of the hill, there are stop signs at all but one street uh, between Columbia and Verdugo Road. And I'm just wondering why stop signs were not considered, because um, that doesn't involve any loud rumbling noises, and it causes people to have to come to a complete stop, you know, one or two stop signs. Um, I'm sure, I know LA has to meet warrants uh, like, like we do, and they seem to have stop signs at these minor streets that are very similar to the streets on this stretch of Adams. So uh, those are the two questions I had. Regarding the noise impact, uh, we, did, uh, we did anticipate that, that um, these devices would create noise. So we uh, definitely made sure that um, on the position. Sorry, my microphone is off, so I'll start over. Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian and, and Commissioner Lester. Um, regarding the noise impact, staff did anticipate the, the potential for noise impacts. And um, the petition made it very clear to um, residents that would be signing the petition that that would be a potential issue. Um, so out of uh, out of the uh, what was it the the uh, hundred percent of homes, uh, I believe it was thirty six, uh, seventy eight percent uh, did support uh, this uh, this measure. And um, regarding the stop signs. Uh, the concern regarding speeding on Adams has been going on for, for a few years, and, and we have received requests to study various intersections along the corridor for multi-way stop or always stop controls. So there's been studies at at least three of the intersections along the corridor, and neither of them met the uh, California Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices uh, standards for installation of, of multi-way stop control. Thank you. By the way, I haven't forgotten our speaker. We'll, we'll come to that. Mr. Stephen Meek in a minute, we'll come to you. So, Commissioner Bonston. Thank you. Um, yeah, I see some differences a little bit from the previous example that we had. And I, I, I see what you were saying, uh, Commissioner Lester, on, you know, kind of being a straight shot down the hill. And the pictures kind of speak to why you could see sp speeding happening. Um, I, I guess I have kind of a question and a comment. One of my questions, and I know that's come up before, perhaps on that first example that we had a year ago um, with street humps, uh, you know, when we look at traffic calming measures, it, the go-to kind of answer tends to be street humps, and yet I'm, I'm kind of curious what is the universe of options that we have for street calming. Um, in the previous example, you listed um, speed humps, edge line striping and then the speed feedback signs. And it sounds like in this one, they're already using the speed, uh, speed feedback signs. Um, and they have, I'm not giving it the right word, but the cute little signs in the road, also known as the, the what? Slow streets program, better, better phrase for that. Um, I would think of, you know, trees and landscaping, narrowing the street. There's other kind of design measures that can take place. And that's what I think is also a solution that could take place here. There's a lot less street trees um, that you have, and perhaps that's also speaking to the need for fire and response on the street. Um, and I, I appreciate the question about the stop signs. That's curious to me that they don't meet the standards for that. Um, that said, you know, if this is a, I love a pilot project. I mean, there's no harm in trying something. And I would be curious if we do initiate a pilot project to really, um, be responsible responsible in returning and kind of seeing how it's going to really kind of do the same assessment a year in or, or sometime in to really check to see that it is meeting the goals um and yeah so those are kind of my initial thoughts i'm curious to hear from the the speaker too 
Thank you. Um, I guess just a few comments on this um, and maybe starting with a question. So the block length are less than 500 feet on all these cases. I guess that's what I heard. Yes, that is correct on, on, this, um, on this particular segment that we're reviewing. And I like the idea and sound of those rumble solution. It, it sounds good, and obviously the residents are not concerned with the noise, and that's good because they're the one who are going to actually be impacted, and if they're okay with it, uh, we should be fine. But is the fire department, I assume, have no problem with that, right, versus speed hump or speed bump with the rumbling solution? Fire department wouldn't have any issue, I assume. Yes, um, um, Chairperson Pro Tem, um, these rumble bars and in, in, uh, pavement markings uh, would not slow up uh, uh, emergency response at all. Okay. On the slides, I think either I was confused or there was a, a typo there because I saw 78% agreeing on a speed hump, but maybe we meant to say 78% are agreeing with the rumble bars, right? Or did we ask them both? Did we ask them, you like this and this, and they both said the same thing, 78%? Um, yes, uh, Chairperson Pro Tem, you're correct. There was, an, uh, there was a typo on the, okay. on the presentation. It, it should have been the pilot program uh, rumble strips. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's hear our speaker here, and we can come back if you have additional comment and question. Um, Mr. Stephen Mick. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Stephen Meek. I'm the president of the Adams Hill Neighborhood Association. Uh, I was the person who walked the street and got the signatures. Uh, actually, 78% is kind of iffy just because two of the houses are under construction. So the, I couldn't get a signature of those. And the third one, uh, they did not speak, we didn't speak the same language, so they didn't want to sign anything. Uh, we have, we being the Neighborhood Association, has worked with Public Works, discussing with them numerous different things. And they've worked with us, you know, going over, having meetings with us, et cetera. The neighbors on Adams have complained for years about the speeding. Uh, we've all experienced pe and heard people zooming up and down at all hours of the day and night. I have been passed on the wrong side of the road several times for people zooming up the hill, didn't want to drive 25 miles an hour. Uh, Public Works provided me with the petition forms. I went to every house I could, uh, explained to them that it would be noisy, that you know, hopefully over time people will realize they're there and slow down. <laughs> but uh, they realized there would be noise. They explained to me, more than one person explained to me how they've been hit and run several times from speeders on that road. Uh, I please, Let's go ahead and approve this pilot program. Give it a try and see what we can come up with. If you have any other questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Any questions, additional comments, commissioners? Um, oh, sorry. I was deciding if I had. Please, please go ahead. Mine's a mild, so thank you for your comment. Um, a mild restate of, you know, I, I hope uh, and I was trying to figure out if I felt it was appropriate to address you, and it's, I'm addressing the commission, but um, if the neighborhood also sought to take advantage of some of the you know, tree initiatives that the city has, I, th I really think that street trees and trees and yards would go a, lo a long way in kind of creating a sense of space and kind of enclosing that to do some um, speed reduction as well. Um, and then I guess my question was just the removal. So it sounds like if these are a pilot program, there's certainly an opportunity. The heat is used to put them on, and I would imagine heat is used to take them off, and we've tested that, and that sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to add as a comment, um, yeah, if the neighborhood is very much in favor of trying this, I, I think as a pilot, for sure, um, that's reasonable. Um, I, I wonder, though, if it doesn't go well, um, and even maybe if not, I'd be interested to know if what were the details for staff about not meeting the requirements for stops. Uh, my understanding is LA does traffic control reports and they follow similar rules and they seem to have put stops at these very minor streets on the other side. Um, so I'm just, I'm very curious to know exactly why 
that it is not uh, it's not meeting the requirements for that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I it. I think it's it's very important for the communities to have a big say in, in matters like this, and their opinion, you know, carries a lot of weight. Thank you. Um, I have to admit, actually, even though this is only two blocks away from where my parents live, but I hardly drive that street. So, um, but just looking at the pictures, I, I think I can get a good idea. With that said. Uh, I would like to make a motion and go with the recommendation of staff and uh, recommend uh, installation of the pilot program, street rumbles, uh, whatever we call that, those new terms. But I'm, I'm making a motion to approve that. Com uh, Chairperson Azarian, I, I'm yes. sorry for interjecting. We have a caller. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I thought we talked. Sure, let, let's, uh, let's go with the callers then. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Brian Spence, Mr. Brian Spence, you're on the air, and um, you have five minutes. Yes, good evening. Thank you for having me, and thank you for this opportunity to weigh in on improvements happening on my block. Uh, the photos that were referenced in the presentation were actually taken from roughly in front of my house, uh, and so this uh, proposal does have a direct impact. Um, I do appreciate the efforts to try and uh, calm traffic on Adams. As everyone knows in this room and elsewhere, it, it is a, a practically a highway with the way the vehicles travel down up and down that street. I also have young children worried about that as well as the, the rest of the neighbors. Um, my, my question actually is the rumble strips, while it sounds like a great idea, I am concerned about the noise. Um, and when the survey was um, brought around, the noise was not actually brought up as a major point, and I don't think actually that was a typo on the presentation because when I was signing the form, it was for speed humps and not for rumble strip. So I just want to make sure or, or potentially other neighbors maybe misunderstood that as well. Uh, I'd be curious, do we know how loud the rumble strips are? I'm thinking, you know, on a highway, my experience is they're quite loud, and I'm usually hearing them through my vehicle, let alone, you know, a neighbor's house from 50 feet away. So I'm just a little concerned that this noise is going to be happening at all hours of the night. And lastly, if this doesn't slow down emergency vehicles, who's to say it's going to slow down a speeding regular passenger car? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good points. I, I guess uh, with that, I, I'm, I'm going to reopen Com, uh, to commissioners comments feedback uh, I may just add one thing I believe I think the noise is going to be significant while you're driving I don't think it'll be significant from if you're inside the house and sleeping overnight and someone driving over it 50 miles an hour but that's my opinion I don't have any way of proving that but with that said I'll open again to the commissioners Sure, um, I can add to that. I mean, I live near a street with speed bumps and they are not noise free by any stretch of the imagination. It's the sound of a car slowing down, then you hear a loud clunk noise, and then you hear a just acceleration and it's all day, all night. So speed bumps also are very noisy, even if they were what was on the original uh, uh, sort of explanation of what this plan was. Um, uh, I mean, like I say, this is a, it's a trial, right? So um, I think it, to some extent it's important to uh, um, give it a try and see how it works. But uh, one other thing is that I, I believe, I mean, I, since I can't enter them, I, it's, it's not clear that I can't enter these comments, but I understand that some email comments were sent in in favor of these rumble strips. And uh, we're looking for a way to make sure those comments can be entered, um, adding to what the support that's already been shown. Thank you. Yeah, I would just add, I mean, I think having heard the caller, um, and I do appreciate this, I, I've i kind of talked around it, so I think I'll be more direct. I, I am a little worried. I love that we have a street calming program. Um, I do think sometimes the emphasis is too much on street humps. And I think if I recall back to looking at the website, if I, it, it actually really kind of steers people to be come in and kind of request those in particular. What I think might be more helpful is if people are identifying, neighborhood groups are identifying problems and kind of bringing to the city, identifying it as a problem and let us look at the universe of solutions. So what I'd like to see kind of 
brought up to the surface and more supported are some other alternatives besides just the street homes because I do I do think they're quite limiting and it's kind of the, again the go to and I and it you know could be that we're limited by cost and there's a, certainly other factors but I, I I think what I have as a question is what is the process how do how do a community members come to the city with the request and then how is that deciphered which is the the best solution and what is the universe of solutions and how is that shown or offered to people. Um, I'm curious about that because I would like to, again, kind of pull out and support some of the other measures um, that may have less sound impacts, you know, but I'm to that end also interested in seeing pilot programs. I think that's, you know, good for us to be trying new things. Um, but I, I'm just as a broader comment about the program, wanting to have a, a more of a sense of all the options that are availed to neighborhoods that are, are seeking um, solutions to both speeds and um, high traffic volumes. Um, with that, I, I think that this is appropriate to go ahead and try with the pilot, although I really respect the feedback that we heard on both sides of it. I do think it could very well be a noise problem. And I also, again, it, it feels like we're kind of adding another solution to the street that in some ways already has like these kind of infrastructure components. We've got the signs, we've got now the rumble street, we kind of keep adding little pieces to it. It feels like it's missing something bigger um, to help uh, with the calming. Yes. Uh, Chairperson Pro Tem, um, Nazarian and Commissioner Bonson, if I could ask, add, um, we've been, as Mr. Meek uh, indicated, we've been working with the neighborhood for a long time on this and uh, this is an issue that's been unfortunately uh, with the neighborhood for several years. But one of the other ideas, you're absolutely right, that we came up with, uh, we're not relying just on speed humps, um, we came up with the idea of a traffic circle. And uh, you know, we presented that to the, um, uh, to the, uh, uh, the management of the HOA and they presented that to their, uh, to their um, uh, to our community, and uh, unfortunately, it was it was not approved. It was voted down. So we have tried. That's just an example that we're not just going speed humps or rumble strips. We're kind of going down the list of the alternatives, and this was the kind of the one of the last uh, items that uh, we wanted to try as a pilot to see the the impact of it. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's interesting about the um, the circular rotary. Would oh, you go? No. Roundabout, thank you. This was a temporary one. Uh, we offered that as a pilot as well. They would just put it there, uh, not pour concrete, but this would be just a temporary traffic circle that we would install just to see the impacts of it. But because it required us to take away some of the parking spots at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at that location, uh, the uh, neighborhood felt that uh, you know, they, there was limited parking, so they, that was one of the reasons. Uh, that they uh, did not vote for it. That's unfortunate to hear. That feels kind of short-sighted. Um, and, and I guess it sounds like you, it's still by community majority. So it, you really kind of need the Homeowners Association support, I would imagine, to, to move. With that. Thank you for giving us that background. Uh, that does sound like a really viable solution, um, and perhaps it'll come up again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, before I ask for a motion, I have one final question. L let's suppose we make a motion and approve this. What would it take for the community, if enough of them don't like this, what would it take the process to take this away, what we're going to approve here? Yes, um, I'm Chairperson Pro Tem Nazarian and members of the commission. Uh, public Works will be um, all ears and in, in waiting to hear from the community. This is a pilot program for us. It's something new. So we're going to be ready to hear that feedback. Um, uh, removal uh, uh, can, is fully under our jurisdiction. So if enough feedback comes from, from the community about the noise impacts and, and maybe they're not getting the benefit that, uh, that, that we hope for, then uh, Public Works can move forward with the removal. And, and if I may add, uh, we're as... Uh, Mr. Meek indicated we're in uh, very good communication with the uh, with the community uh, and association and in uh, pretty much constant contact. So um, we are going to, uh, as uh, Mr. Casanova mentioned, we're going to have our eyes and ears open 
and uh, receive any feedback that they have. Thank you. Uh, with that, I guess I'm opening up to see if anyone, any commissioner, you, you have any motion to make? Shall I make the motion? Uh, you certainly yep. could, yes. Thanks. Uh, I'll, then I'll make the motion to go ahead and, um, are we recommending? Are we? You're, re you're either recommending or, or alternative you can deny or? Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, I th then a motion to recommend uh, this pilot um, for Adam Street. I'll second it. Mayor Pro Tem Nazarian, Commission members, actually, it's motion approving. Approving. What's being, yes. Okay. Do I need to restate that? Yes, please. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, this pilot project for Adams. I extra second that. I'll take roll call. Chairperson, Chairperson Nazarian? Yes. Commissioner Lester? Yes. Commissioner Bonstein? Yes. And Commissioner Yakubian. Next item is uh, informational reports, but we don't have any. Uh, item number eight is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. The commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. Do we have any speaker or anyone in the list? No, we do not. Okay, so, and then I guess we can make, uh, move to the last and final item. Okay. Um, item nine is uh, commission's uh, staff comments and updates. I'm not sure if there are any updates. Uh, Chairperson, uh, a pro tem, we don't have any comments. Okay. Then do we uh, have a motion to adjourn? Proudly, I motion to adjourn. Second that. A roll call for that? No. Okay. Oh, for the time. I have to record the time. 749. Thank you. Okay, we're good. Thank you, everyone.